Hello, I'm Paul Mount, and welcome to my world of stuff. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. I'm um, just doing a quick video Saturday night with some first thoughts on the latest from Marvel. Uh, you might have seen my little preview video, uh, Justice League versus Falcon and Winter Soldier, which I uh, posted a couple of nights ago. Uh, it's now Saturday early evening, and um, I've seen the first episode. Hopefully, we've all seen the first episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier that dropped on Disney Plus yesterday morning. Uh, we also had the Snyder Cut, but I'm not talking about that because I haven't seen it all yet. I'm wading my way through it. As I did say, I, I wouldn't be watching all four hours in a, one go, but I'm taking my time. So I'm halfway through it at the moment and I'll probably do a little video tomorrow just with some thoughts and conclusions about this latest uh, masterpiece. But I'm going to do just a few minutes on Falcon and Winter Soldier Part 1. It's arrived, it's out there. We we knew that it would be more broadly in keeping with what we come to expect from the Marvel Cinematic Universe after the... Uh, complexities and head-scratching mystery of the superb WandaVision regardless of what you may have thought of the finale which became more typically Marvel but Falcon and Winter Soldier was always going to be much more traditional um, shooting and fighting superhero stuff except the first episode wasn't really first episode was very much a scene set up reintroducing the characters of Sam Wilson who's the Falcon and Bucky Barnes the former Winter Soldier um, after the blip which uh, was the cataclysmic conclusion to the Avengers arc in Avengers Endgame where uh, Thanos's finger snap was reversed and humanity uh, was restored and all the existence of the universe half of which had been erased by Thanos was restored and the natural order of things continued now this first episode New World Order um, sets out the story here with an explosive introductory sequence where we see Falcon still doing his superhero Avenger thing in a thrilling aerial action sequence where he rescues a prisoner from a terrorist group who seemed to think that the world was better the way it was uh, post blip and uh, battling to um, make their mark. Uh, it's a thrilling sequence goes on for about 10 minutes of uh, the Falcon at his best uh, we weaving and ducking and, and spinning through the air helicopter crashes explosions gunfights fist fights it's it's you watch it and you think oh this is back to what i know from marvel i'm comfortable with this but that doesn't last for long because once that sequence is open the, the episode sort of slows down the pace and it becomes much more character based as we thought it would and as i think it needed to be uh, it reintroduces as i said the characters of both sam and bucky sam is um, in a strange place at the end of endgame you may remember the aged captain america passed on the mantle of, of cap and the shield more importantly to sam with a view to him taking over the new captain america uh, sam doesn't think he's worthy and doesn't think that's his destiny so he decides that the shield and everything to do with captain america should be um kept in a museum on display for people to always remember cap but without trying to replace him because you know I think we all agree that Cap is pretty irreplaceable as a character. Excuse me. Um, so he's sort of finding his place in the world again. You know, he's uh, trying to reconnect with his sister Sarah. She's uh, we've not met her before, but she's trying to sort of keep the the family's uh, fishing business alive. Um, they're not making much money, of course. Everything's in chaos post blip, and I'm glad that all that side of things hasn't been forgotten. The, the ramifications and after effects of the blip haven't just been brushed under the carpet. It's a changed world. It's a new world order. And everybody's trying to come to grips with it and come to terms with it and find their place in it. Bucky's in a bad place too. He's having therapy for what he's done in the past. His terrible years as an assassin for Hydra. He's having nightmares and dreams. So neither of them are in particularly good places. And importantly, neither of them have met up yet because they don't meet up in this first episode. So it's very much a slow-paced character piece um, looking into the psychology of these two fractured men after events of, of recent uh, months presumably for them where um, the world's been turned upside down and they're left trying to find their place in it now um, it's a very good episode it's terrific it, I think the show will get better I think the show will improve once it picks up the pace because we haven't really met the villains of the piece yet we know that Baron Zemo is going to turn up um, who we saw in the Civil War he's got scores to settle we know that Sharon Carter, Peggy Carter's niece, played by Emily Van Camp, she'll be back at some stage. So the first episode is very much putting the pieces or some of the pieces in, in place and isn't really yet setting up the story apart from the mention of this brilliantly named organisation, the Flag Smashers, who want to break down borders between countries so that the world is one great big unified 
much. Um, and I think that's going to be sort of part of the ongoing storyline. So I think that this hasn't got the complexity or the ingenious storytelling techniques of WandaVision, but it is very much sort of... Mar it looks like Marvel. It's got that sheen and gloss to it and wit and imagination. But it's being reined back at the moment because we just need to get to know Sam and Bucky again. And I think this episode does a brilliant job in doing that. So a lot of Marvel fans might be twiddling their thumbs and wanting more of the action. But it's very clever that they place that big action set piece at the beginning of the episode. Just to sort of reassure people, yep, this is, you know, this is the MCU as you know it, but on your small screen. Um, so I was very happy with it, knowing that, you know, there's a lot more to come. As a first episode, I think it was terrific. Um, and there's lots of things that, we, you know, it, it's interesting because it doesn't, it doesn't make us scratch our heads and go away and think, oh, what does that mean? What does that mean? No, because it just presents its story in a linear fashion. But of course, with a terrific cliffhanger ending, which I don't think any of us saw coming, certainly not Sam. So um, very much looking forward to seeing how this continues. Um, first episode gets a good solid 8 out of 10 from me. I'm getting the hang of this. Gets a good solid World of Stuff 8. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to seeing where the show goes. It's a good, bold, confident start for the second new Disney Plus MCU show. Onwards and upwards. And let's see um, how high the Falcon and the Winter Soldier can fly. See you soon. <laughs>